And I live to fish here, and I am out in Cape Coral, Florida. That's right, quite a ways back from my home waters out at Lake St. Clair. Out here for some R&R &R with the family and doing a little bit of fishing. Gonna hit the saltwater canals and see what we can get. Let's go. to live to fish as you can tell I'm talking a little bit quiet because it's early in the morning here don't want to disturb anybody on the canal sleeping but I am at a new location and it's quite a ways away from where we usually fish on Anchor Bay or Lake St. Clair this is the canals of Cape Coral Florida saltwater fishing is a lot different than freshwater fishing what we're using is live bait out here not one of my favorites um, I can tell you that uh, it's not something that I specialize in, but I want to try to catch something, catch something a little different than normal freshwater stuff. So we're not going for peacock bass, we're not going with some of the signature series fish of freshwater in Florida. We're going to go for some saltwater stuff. We spent some time in the local bait shop and what they're recommending are these circle hooks right here. This is a number two circle hook and they're recommending that I use live shrimp or frozen shrimp to get some fish. So gear-wise, I brought my Placino spinning gear, it's the collapsible. That went uh, into the suitcase and collapsed just fine for travel. Very, very convenient. And uh, the rental property that we're at here actually had a great little Shakespeare combo. So we're going to be throwing that as well. It's got a bobber attached to it, and that's got a number one circle hook on it with a little bit of weight, and we're going to see what we can get. And this is the bait that I'm using right now. Uh, so far, I have caught a catfish on it. Um, I've had some other bites. There have been some crabs or some other things that uh, have been eaten away at the shrimp. So it's a little difficult to get something hooked. It's not like you're setting the hook. You're waiting for something to kind of eat it and hook themselves, much like uh, carp or catfish fishing up in fresh water. Also packed away my trusty collapsible placino net. So hopefully I can uh, get some use out of this thing. Now, while I was down here, I really wanted to support the local bait shop, so I picked up some hooks. But I went to Wally World and found out those same hooks that cost me 5 to $6 were only $0.97. Cents. One thing I was not prepared for was how much the water rises and falls during the flow of the tide. Now, here it's kind of at a higher level, and the best luck that I had was when the water levels were at its lowest. Now, here you're going to see there's a little drainage pipe here. This drainage pipe is uh, probably about halfway to three quarter of the way covered. Most of the time in the early mornings and at late at night, that thing is fully exposed. And like I said, that's when I had my best strikes. All right, I had a bobber down and pretty sure it's gonna be a whisker shark. Yep. Same as always. Yeah, it's a pretty good sized one. Hopefully I don't get snagged like I did the last time though. Ooh, careful. Careful with the bark. Uh, I know. I know I'm trying, buddy. There you go. I'm trying. Say hi to the people at home. Say welcome to Live to Fish. I know. Alright, buddy. Alright, thank you very much. Whoa, that was kind of cool. I don't know what that was, but I wasn't close to my shrimp. It is pretty much the rock bass of Florida, and I'm catching uh, quite a few whisker sharks on the shrimp. 
not bad. Now here's a little better look about what I was telling you about the tide. Now here you can see that drainage ditch that was once covered by water that was across the canal from where we were staying. And here is the pipe that is kind of adjacent to the property we were staying at. And you'll see here, it's a good uh, foot, maybe a foot and a half below that pipe now. So the water levels really, really fluctuated quite a bit. All right, so we got something on one line here. Bobber's still up, but looks like we got a fish on this one. One thing to keep in mind is that this is the end of July and probably one of the worst times to be down here fishing. It is slow. Okay, this will be a dozen if this is in fact another whisker shark. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure it is. Right, let's get him over that line. There we go. Yep, another whisker shark for the vacay out here. Oh, he's a tiny guy. The smallest one I've caught so far. All right, buddy, all right, buddy, hang on. Hang on. All right. Let's put you in the timeout, Matt. Give you a chance to get your yayas out here. You're not hooked too bad. There we go. All right. It's another tiny uh, whisker shark for the vacay saltwater fishing trip. See, bud. All right, I'm gonna show you a trick here to what I've been using to get more hookups on these small little circle hooks. What I'm taking is I'm taking the shrimp and again, I'm putting it through the, uh, the end of the tail to the meat, the shell, the shell part here. But I'm looping one up through past the eyelet of the hook and letting that stay on the line. Then I'm taking another one. And the second one, I'm gonna put right through that shell part at the end of the tail by the body. Come on. And I'm gonna leave that on the hook. So this is what it's gonna look like when I cast it out there. Just like that. That one will slide up and down the leader and the other one's gonna just sit on the hook. Seem to get a better hookup ratio that way because I think it entices them to come back a little bit more. Maybe they feed on the top one and then hit the bottom one later. Not sure, but it's been working for me. Also gives me a little bit more weight when I'm casting it out without the bobber on my uh, Placino. Because I'm not using any weight, I'm just using the, uh, just using the shrimp and the hook. had the line moving. But a lot of times it's crabs, they kind of grab it and they run with it, or they pick at it. They move it just enough so that either the bobber gets some action or the, the line goes in. All right, we got another one, I think. Drag's not pulling, so this has got to be a small guy here. Well, there goes the drag. A little bit. Now he's tiny. Nope. Alright, let's get him over here. All right, a little bigger than the last one, but nonetheless, same old, same old. All right, we got to put you in the timeout, Matt, or are you going to be good? Okay. He's saying he's good, which is a good thing. All right, after a little bit of surgery, he's good to go. Just gotta watch out for those barbs. You don't want to be stuck by those right there or the one back here. Let's get you back in, bud. 
Thank you. Off he goes. Now the great thing about Cape Coral is there's both fresh and saltwater canals. So you might want to check the local map of the area, which does an outstanding job of showing you what's fresh water, what's saltwater. And keep in mind, you have to get a license by the state for either fresh water or saltwater, or get them both that we are covered no matter where you're going to be fishing. Coming up on Live to Fish, we are going to be back in Michigan, back on Lake St. Clair, and don't forget about Friday special. That's right, Catches of the Week. Get your Catches of the Week submissions in and get featured right here, only here, on Live to Fish. <laughs>